so honored to have Lady Colin Campbell here talking about her newest updated book, Meghan and Harry, The Real Story, Persecutors or Victims. This is gonna be good. <laughs> Welcome to Popcorn Palace. I am Andy Signor, and oh my gosh, we have actual royalty. I've dressed up. I've put on a suit and tie. We have Lady C herself, Lady Colin Campbell. Thank you for being here. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Andy. It's a pleasure to meet you and Steph. <laughs> Steph is here. Steph's in the background. She's helped prep. I'm hoping to get it. I, I want to get you an interview with her at some point as well. I, she has a killer channel, almost at 100,000. We love Steph, but I'm, I'm honored to have this time with you here. And I want to get into this book. What a book. Steph Power read through, and we've been going through it together. She helped outline. You have some amazing stuff in this book. This is an updated version of your previously popular Meghan and Harry, The Real Story. What chose, you know, why did you decide to do an updated versus sort of its own book? What were your thoughts in, in creating this new uh, edition? Well, I would have actually preferred to have written a totally new book. It would have been easier to write. But my agent said that it would have caused contractual difficulties with the other, uh, you know, all, all, all the other publishers. Oh, I see. And, and so, so he said, it's as long as it's updated, all the contracts still exist. Well, then some of them could have maybe sued me for writing a book on a, on a, the same subject so soon after the previous book. But Makes there was sense. an there was an awful lot of material that needed to be addressed. And people had been asking me for quite a while to write the book and to up well to update the book. And so I thought, well, yes, I'll do it. But it took 10 months. It was much more arduous than if I had just written a book straight, you know. It was it was really very tiresome to have to do it the way I did it. And I Right, because you're going through it. like updating portions you previously wrote to sort of talk about it in the now, correct? Yes, yes. And then also, of course, you know, Harry and Meghan's antics have have been what some of what was covered four years ago uh, was really totally redundant. And I mean, remember, I started writing the previous version five years ago. So, you know, it, it, it was arduous, but anyway, I've done it, so. Yes, congratulations. It's a task for sure, congratulations. So people, you're getting pretty much a new book. It's just updated, but she went and did the work. Uh, how does it feel to be a, 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 I love your YouTube channel. You you Thank never you. hold back. You are so opinionated in the best ways. How does it feel to now be a YouTube star? Does that, uh, does that <laughs> surprise you at times? You're like, oh my gosh, yes, I'm now a huge YouTube talent. <laughs> well, I never think of myself in terms of being a star. And I have to tell you, um, all of this has happened quite by accident because during COVID, I had a house guest here who said, really because there was nothing for him to do. There was a lot for me to do because I was writing my Meghan and Harry book at the time. But he's, and he's a young He's a house guest and he wasn't somebody I knew terribly well, but I knew him slightly and he's my children's generation. And so he suggested doing this channel for, really to entertain his friends. And that's how it took off. And I, nobody's more surprised than I am. So, you know, it's yeah, nice. I it, for those who aren't, I mean, I'm sure anybody watching has already subscribed to Lady Colin Campbell's can channel here, but it's wonderful. How I'm just fascinated as a YouTuber now. I have a chance. Like, how how do you go about this? You have you have a people helping you. Your topics. Do you just go and rant? Are they Are you ready? Is it always just up? Oh, they did something. I got a comment. How do you sort of prepare for this? I have somebody who edits it because I'm totally untechnological. <laughs> So, Fair. I mean, I know absolutely nothing about technology, as you might have discovered a bit earlier when you had to lead me through the most basic <laughs> Everybody thing. has that Zoom problem. No, yeah, no worries. 
Well, certainly anybody of my age would have it, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you but, made it on. She did it herself, folks. She knows something. But but I I go through, I read all of the comments. So, because I am led by what the viewer wants me to speak about. So I read through all of the comments. I distill them. Uh, I go with what I think people want me to address. And then I speak to people. However, I need to gather up my information. And of course, I also have people who provide me with information. Some are friends, uh, some are friends of friends. And so every now and then I come up with something that nobody knows is happening. And then I won't be led by what people ask. I just introduce the subject. You know, I usually see the bongo bongo drums have been beating and that sort of thing. And I go with, but that it, that's how I do it. Well, good. you're doing it great. And I gotta, I'm gonna move on to the book, but I, I have to remiss, I, I gotta thank you because uh, you, you, a, a friend of yours, uh, Dan Wooten, you got him to, you sort of implied and got him to apologize to Johnny Depp. And I, I know a, a lot of people were probably bugging you because I was sort of pressuring him, but I'm glad uh, you put that out there. And I like that you're always giving everybody benefit of the doubt. You're really always trying to be the, the better person regarding everything. And so uh, I compliment you on that. You're, you're a good, you seem to be good at sort of trying to navigate these waters because it's tough sometimes. Like, where you got a lot of opinions you put some out that some don't like, uh, it can have a reverse effect, right? Well, yes, but you know, I'm used to brickbats. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I've, been, I've been in the public eye for 50 years, and I also have had an extraordinary life, some of which was extremely difficult. So I'm, I'm, I don't, my head isn't easily turned. And I also uh, try to be guided by what I think is the right thing to do and the good thing to do. First of all, good, then secondly, right. And, you know, where Dan was concerned, I have understood all along that Dan is a guy. He's a gay guy, but he's a guy. And he was duped by Amber Heard. But let's not forget, so was Johnny Depp, you know. And so I and I also understood that while for a long time he wasn't able to apologize because there were legal ramifications why he couldn't apologize because he wasn't acting on his own at the time he was an employee. And, you know, there, there were nuances, which sometimes people aren't aware of the constraints that that people operate under. But I was aware of them. I like Dan. I think he's a good guy. Yeah, I like his royal coverage. I do gotta admit, I still I still hope to talk to him one day about the Johnny thing. I still well, but well, well, I want to focus on you in this, because speaking of people who, who uh, aren't who don't do well, uh, let's get to Megan Harry, uh, because your book uh, talks about them in great detail, guys. If you haven't picked up a copy yet, make sure you get a copy of Megan Harry. The real story, the expanded edition, has all the stuff you're going to know. And I want to get into some of the portions of the book here now that we have you here. You start the book uh, really into the with the race issues, uh, and you say some really fascinating things in here. Uh, I guess my my first question would be sort of the fact of her... Uh, Hurst, uh, let me, people throughout the Commonwealth, particularly those of color, were invested in Megzi's success because of her black heritage. She had used race to divide rather than unify. This has caused damage to race relations throughout the Commonwealth and potential adverse consequences to the future. Can you elaborate? Why do you believe Megzi has caused such damage to race relations throughout the Commonwealth? What are, what are the sort of consequences of this, in your opinion? Well, I mean, I didn't come to this opinion on my own, I came to this opinion as a result of being approached by various Commonwealth and African ambassadors, high commissioners and diplomats, because I'm Jamaican. I may be a white Jamaican, but I'm Jamaican. And like all Jamaicans, 
I have relations who are part black or part Chinese or part something else. I mean, that's quite common in Jamaica to have, even within the white families, they have, there's been some, some mixture with certain cousins, etc. And I was brought up in Jamaica at a time in the 50s and 60s, when Jamaica was at the forefront of race relations, when people in the United Kingdom and the United States were way behind us in terms of pro racial harmony. And to, I have seen what has happened in Jamaica once Michael Manley started to play the race card and the color, the, the color card and the class card, and how it damaged Jamaica's economy, and not only damaged the economy, but the structure of the society, and resulted in a whole host of violence. And people in the West Indies have not forgotten what happened there. And, you know, they are really, they were very concerned that Megan and was mischief making. And the, the experience of people of color in the United Kingdom or in the Commonwealth bears little or no relationship to the experience of people of African American heritage. The two situations are totally, totally different. And and a lot of the diplomats were really concerned that that Meghan was creating tremendous mischief, which she did. I mean, you know, she and Harry had to destroy William and Catherine's Jubilee tour of the West Indies, in particular Jamaican. Of course, being Jamaican, I had access to everybody concerned. And I discovered what was really going on. And I thought this is an iniquity. And people Many of the diplomats have said to me, you are providing a very valuable service and you need to call this couple out on their destructive behavior. And they have encouraged me and they have fed me information that as to the particularities of the damage. So, so with me, it's, it's not just an academic exercise. It's I have a personal involvement in it. And I'm very aware of the fact as well that Meghan was a great hope for people of color when she entered the royal family. And she has squandered every bit of advantage that she had that would have accrued to people of color throughout the Commonwealth. And remember, the Commonwealth is the largest block of nations on earth. It's a huge percentage of the world's population, much of which is people of color. And I just thought, you know, this, this woman needs to have the light of reality shone upon her. So that's why I did what I did. Uh, and, but, but it's not totally academic. There is a strong personal element. Yeah, you mentioned the book in her younger years, she denied part of her heritage. Megan's revelations of her early struggles reveal that she didn't see, suffer from a sense of alienation as a result of her biracialism. Uh, she then suffered the shame she felt and she denied that part of her identity and identified as white, which on the surface at the time may have seemed more desirable. Why do you believe she's now gone full reversal and sort of seemingly denying that part of her identity? Uh, what, why do you think she's doing that now? Well, she's an opportunist. And she thought it was going to work for her. Had there been no Black Lives Matter, I think you would have seen a totally different narrative. Uh, but she, she, Megan cannot resist jumping on a bandwagon. Uh, and, you know, she has artificially created links where they don't exist and where they do exist. She has exaggerated and magnified them. And I think she is, I think she's a very dangerous individual in terms of certain socioeconomic facts, including racial harmony. And, you know, he, let me put it this way. Had there been a racist in the British royal family, which there was not, because Meghan would not have been allowed to marry Harry if she had not been a woman of color. That is a fact. I know that 
from royals themselves. The only reason why Meghan was permitted to marry Harry was that she was a woman of color because they knew she was, she was wildly inappropriate. But because she was a woman of color and Harry informed the queen and Prince Philip that they would be accused of racism if they didn't allow the marriage and they understood that Meghan had one or two advantages, chief of which was being a woman of color, but also she was able to control Harry, who was uncontrollable. And at the time, that seemed a good thing. But Meghan then uses being a person of color to the detriment of the royal family. And they're, they're, oh, they are not racist. And they, but even if they had been racist, would it have not been a demonstration of loyalty to her husband and to the institution and to the country that had embraced her to resolve the matter privately instead of publicly? Instead of which she's gone on television, she's had that creep amid scabies lie on her behalf. We, we call them lie brows, Lady C. Sorry? We call them libraries. Uh. <laughs> libraries. Oh, That's very cute. Well, and, and you need to remember that he also plays the color card. He says he is biracial. Well, on his father's side, he is Caucasian. On his mother's side, he's Caucasian. I don't understand how two halves don't make a whole, but they make bi. Bi means two. But, you know, he's... He's, he's, anyway, to, to return to what I was saying, even if there had been a race problem within the royal family, which there was not, exposing it and making it public showed treachery, disloyalty, and every single negative quality that, trait is a better word, that you can think of. So they have no justification for their behavior, Meghan and Harry, not under ethical, moral, or any other terms, and certainly not under the terms of reality. Yeah, you went, went to my next question. It's on page 105, guys, where she talks about had it not been for her African part of her heritage, the marriage would not have been allowed to proceed. And again, you just believe because she was using that to hold them hostage in a way and threaten them with it. They sensed from the beginning, in fact, I want to go to another Piece. You talked to a journalist from The Mirror who said basically perfected up, perfectly summed it up by no one wanted to hurt Harry. He was truly popular. And if that was the girl he wanted and she could make him happy, which she certainly seemed to be doing, no one wanted to rain in his parade almost by common but silent consent. We all took a soft line. You remark and go back to that period of everyone liked Megan. Even the media was softening stories to protect Megan at that yeah. point, which she claims didn't happen. So, you know, do you think the media is responsible in almost enabling her? And should they have leashed, leashed out harder back then? No, th because they, they at the time did what they thought was the decent thing. And Harry is the one who told his grandparents that her race would be used against them if they didn't allow the marriage. So no, no, I think, I think the, the media were extremely generous and they behaved very decently and protectively. And it is ironic that they would then be accused of the opposite behavior because they could not have been nicer and more protective of her. And let me tell you, but for legal reasons, I could tell you things that about Megan's history that would make your hair stand on end. Guys, my hairs are already standing on end and yours will too when you see part two of our exclusive interview with Lady C where she goes into Megan's family history. What is she hiding about her mother? Also, could Megan have faked her pregnancy? The theory that so many have talked about, Lady C is gonna talk about it like never before. Guys, you're not going to miss part two of this interview. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for alerts, smash that thumbs up, and make sure you pick up a copy of Megan and Harry, the real story. Make sure you get the updated edition 
Persecutors or Victims by Lady Colin Campbell. It's available now in stores everywhere. Go support her, check it out, and let us know what you think in the comments down below. And yes, stay tuned for part two. Woo! <laughs>